All right, good morning slash good afternoon class and welcome back to civics. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the federal bureaucracy or the system of government that exists at the federal level. And you see a bunch of symbols of some of the different cabinet agencies we'll be talking about a bit today up there. Some of them you guys will already recognize, probably the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, the CIA. But of course, there are many, many different federal agencies that deal with different problems for our country. So first, what is a bureaucracy? A bureaucracy is a systematic structure that handles the everyday business of an organization. The bigger the organization, the more bureaucracy there's going to be. The people that actually handle and take care of things. Now, a lot of people associate this word as like kind of a negative thing, but bureaucracies are necessary to help organized systems. And the people who work in bureaucracies are called bureaucrats. And in the US government, these people are often called civil servants. And so the staff members of the federal bureaucracy, um, most of them belong to the executive branch, but some of them do report to Congress in the legislative branch. Now, federal bureaucracy is organized into different agencies boards, commissions, corporations, and advisory committees. Our federal government has its finger in just about everything. Now, why do we have a bureaucracy? It's supposed to be efficient, a clear chain of command. One person is a boss of a final decision, and that's supposed to be the president, and then effective. It's supposed to set procedures and rules, have specific functions, and define responsibilities. However, anyone who's ever had a deal with a bureaucracy before may not find it's very effective. If you guys ever have to go to the DMV, that may be some of your first experiences, but when you're applying to college, those are different bureaucracy, the federal government for your student loans and things like that. They can be very uh, dehumanizing and depersonal sometimes. And over time, our federal bureaucracy has just grown and grown and grown. When the country was founded, there was only about 2,000 federal employees. Today, around 2 million people work for the federal government. That's not as high as it's ever been. It's shrunk a little bit in recent times, but it's still a lot of people who, one way or another, work for the government. Now, the executive branch itself is, of course, organized into different ways. At the very top, of course, is the president. Everything comes from the president and the vice president is there to assist them. Then we have the White House office and their job is kind of organize the executive branch and really help the president run the day-to-day -day affairs of things. And the White House office is picked out by the president. And then they break up kind of the president's duties into policy, politics and management and support. So when it comes to political and management, the most important person helping out um, the current president, Joe Biden, is his chief of staff, Ron Klain. And the chief of staff is picked by the president, and it's usually one of their closest, if not their closest advisor. This person does not require any Senate approval to get this job, and they kind of set the day-to-day -day activities of the president. Who are you meeting with? Who are you calling on the phone? Where are you giving speeches? Those kind of things, that's all kind of done by the chief of staff. The president also works very closely with the national security advisor. And they're the person that comes in every morning and gives the president their security briefings about the things that are going on around the world that may involve the military. And then this person often graduates in the second term to become the secretary of state. And the current guy if is for that is Jake Sullivan. Now, when it comes to policy, okay, of course you have the president himself, and then they have their close advisors and experts who help them make decisions on what they're gonna do with their power in the country. Now, the president of course does all the important stuff for the most part, but the people who are assisting them include the Office of Management and Budget, who assists or help the president prepare the budget and supervise administration after the Senate approves any economic policy. And then you also have your office of administration, and then a bunch of trade representatives 
who are constantly dealing with other countries, trying to make out new deals and assist and advise the president on foreign trade. So a person you'll often see is the press secretary. This person does not require Senate approval for this job. It's whoever the president wants. And they kind of speak on behalf of the president and usually give either daily or weekly press briefings at the White House where they have to answer questions from members of the media. And they kind of control the information from the White House and kind of set the agenda of what they want to talk about. And the current person for that position is Ms. Jen Pesky. Now, then we have the cabinet. And the cabinet is made up of different heads of different agencies, as well as a couple other positions that are really the key decision makers in the executive branch. They're supposed to advise the president, but also, of course, to carry out the president's will. And there is considered to be 23 cabinet level positions, and these all need to be approved by a majority in the Senate. And so far, um, Joe Biden has got 21 of his 23 cabinet level positions through. And here are some of the different cabinet members. I am not going to talk about each and every one of them. And I'm, I'm not sure there might be one or two people that have dropped out. But these are some of the most important people helping the president. Um, we'll look at a couple of these positions, including the Secretary of State. Right now, it's a guy named Anthony Blinken, who worked in the Obama administration. Janet Yellen was the Federal Reserve Chair, so she helped set interest rates and, and uh, make decisions about central banking. Now she's going to do a similar job as the Treasury Secretary. Lloyd Austin is going to be the Defense Secretary, a former general in the Army. Merrick Garland, who was a judge and could have been a Supreme Court Justice, is going to be the Attorney General. Um, and then there's many other positions down from that way. I know Deb Holland was in the, uh, was in the news a lot. She'll be the first Native American in a cabinet level position uh, pretty much ever. Um, there is one guy, a vice president, who may have counted, but she is now in charge of the interior, which includes a lot of federal land, which is very important to many of the different Native American communities across the country. Now, in the Constitution, Article 2 talks about the executive branch, and it briefly mentions the cabinets. It says heads of departments, but doesn't really list specifics about the president's advisors. And over time, the cabinet has grown as there becomes more need for different specialized experts. You're supposed to be chosen for your expertise in an area. Sometimes, though, you're chosen for political reasons, like an alliance. Um, when Barack Obama was elected president in 2008, he picked Hillary Clinton, who he competed against as the Secretary of State. It's often something that happens as well. Now, the people that are chosen to be cabinet members, they're supposed to be vetted, which means someone goes through their background and makes sure they don't have anything sticking out or committed crimes in the past or anything like that, because the Congress is going to be able to review the pick and question them about anything they've done before and vote yes or no on whether or not to allow them to become a cabinet level official. And if the president picks you, the president can also unpick you. So you can be fired by the president for whatever reason, whenever they want to, without approval of anybody else. Okay, so we're not going to, I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. I'm going to allow you guys to do that on your own for the assignments you'll be working on, in which you have to figure out which department or which uh, part of the federal government you'll have to go to to get some questions answered. Um, but let's take a look at some of the list of what is in the cabinet today Secretary of State, Foreign Policy, Treasury, Money Supply, the Attorney General. This is the person who decides what uh, crimes will be charged, or excuse me, who will be charged with what crimes at a federal level. Secretary of Defense is in charge of the military. Uh, we mentioned the interior, agriculture, it's farming, of course, commerce, trade, labor, people who have to go to work, health and human services, housing and urban development, transportation, energy, education, veterans affairs, and homeland security. Now, I am not going to go through each one of these in the video today, guys, but I have listed 
kind of a brief description of each one of these different parts of the federal bureaucracy and parts of the federal government. And you guys will use this slideshow to help you answer the questions in the assignment today. All right, class, your assignment will look like this. So directions, read each of the following scenarios, identify which executive department will have the answer to your needs. And all those lists the, of that we just showed, like the Homeland Security, Veterans Affairs, those are the different departments we are talking about. So you guys can either use Google to help you answer these questions or use the slideshow. I would definitely use the slideshow, probably be a little bit quicker, okay? And you'll answer questions like this. You have moved to the United States from a foreign country. You and your family would like to become US citizens. This process is called naturalization. So what should you figure out? So you have to look up which department it is, and you're gonna look up and figure out. You're gonna to go to immigration services. Um, your grandfather's vet in the Korean War, blah, blah, blah. You'll answer, answer these questions here. And then guys, we have at the end, what federal agency would you most like to work for and why? And what federal agency would you least like to work for and why? All right, guys, those are the assignments for the week. And then next week, I should be seeing you guys um, synchronously. So I will be around to answer any questions we have about these assignments. Thank you guys very much. And I'll talk to you all soon.